I like to talk about myself and how I was diagnosed. <laughs> I like to let you guys know how I was involved and how I started having issues, just like some of the other patients were discussing. Uh, I I woke up one day around age 14 and started having issues with uh, some joints and some swelling and fatigue, and that was something that you know I thought at age 14 it was just some normal growing pains. You know, I was a a big hefty kid and you know, joints were something I thought that, you know, was supposed to hurt if you're heavy and chubby and stuff. So I didn't really think nothing of it. So having uh, seen my pediatric doctor several times, they started to, to fail something that was a problem. And, uh, you know, I was not really worried about it. I was just trying to get to school and have fun and play sports and, you know, eat chubby kid food, you know. <laughs> so, uh, at the same time, we, we uh, were trying to figure out, I was trying to figure out to take care of my mom. She was she was uh, always dealing with lupus, and that was something I was aware of, and, and kind of a caregiver at the same time. So I, I wasn't really in tune with, with my physical self. That was just something I really didn't worry about. I'm a guy, you know, I'm Mexican. A lot of times we're just supposed to go out there and work and, and help your dad and, you know, fix a house. And, you know, cut the grass and do all that stuff and go out with your brother and your friends, go play football and do all that stuff. And that was something that I was trying to do and have fun. And that's basically what I did do. Uh, but at age 14, that became a problem. Uh, one issue that, that I had, uh, I think, helped start some of this. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a specialist, but uh, I went on a vacation with my family one winter at age 14. And I got bit by a brown recluse in Carlsbad Caverns. And uh, we, we were on vacation, so we spent a few days there trying to have fun with my family. And unfortunately, the, the brown recluse bite uh, started getting infected. And when I got back, that was something that the doctors were really worried about. And if we waited a little bit longer, they thought they were gonna have to cut some more, probably amputate my, my leg from the knee down. But unfortunately, they just took out a big chunk out of my left leg, left calf. And since that trauma, I think that was something that initiated some of the problems with the scleroderma. Uh, none of the doctors really said that, but you know, if you read a lot of studies and you see stuff like that, you, you understand that trauma to the body, stress, those things are kind of induce some of the health problems in a lot of people. So that was something that I, I felt kind of helped the scleroderma or my immune system heart start attacking itself or however you want to look at it. Um, you know, another thing that, that started happening to me was was eating. I mean, eating was something that, you know, I love to do, we all love to do. Uh, when you're a chubby kid at 14, 15, 16, you know, you you, uh, you enjoy food, you enjoy eating anything and everything. And that was something that I started to learn that it wasn't something I was able to do anymore. And uh, so I had to change the, the way I ate. I know it eats you out patients, that's something we all have to deal with, uh, understanding what we can eat and what we can't eat. And uh, at, at that age, I started having issues eating and swallowing and, and uh, complications with certain types of foods that I would eat. And doing that, I had to, uh, I'm sure all of you have this issue of, you know what you can and can't eat now. Uh, you try to step out those boundaries sometimes, but you learn the hard way or, or you figure out the, the good things that work with your body. And uh, a lot of those medicines that, that I used to take were like the Prilosex, the, the Pentoprazoles, all those meds. I'm sure y'all are aware of those too. But uh, you know, they will help and that's one thing you need to be aware of and uh, understand that if you are feeling any type of pain or any issues with your stomach, that's something that uh, like people say, if it's hurting you, understand and be aware of that because express that to your doctor because you're the one that are feeling that pain and you're gonna feel that pain forever unless you express yourself and get it treated. I know it's not easy and you may not understand it, but with your doctor and your own understanding of your, your pain and feeling, ultimately that's something that can help you and help uh, you know your family from dealing with any issues ultimately. I know my family helped me out with a lot of stuff, so uh, family and friends. Um, at that time, at that young age, I started taking a lot of high steroids. That was something that my doctor treated me with, and, and Plaquenil. Plaquenil and Prednisone were something y'all may know. I was taking uh, high doses of both for many years, and 
being chubby and taking prednisone mm -hmm. is a is a very uh, bad mix. Yeah. So I gained a lot of, of weight throughout those years. So uh, unfortunately, uh, you may not think, but I was around 300 pounds in high school, mm -hmm. and that was something that uh, doesn't work with the joints also. So it, it was uh, something to deal with, and it, it's not easy. I mean, you all, you all worry about how you look and, and how you can move around. So that's something uh, growing up you have to deal with uh, every day, just like normal people. But uh, scleroderma patients had, you know, every everyday things with, with my hands and, and uh, you know, eating and, and just my face. And th those issues become very evident when you're a kid. And growing up, um, it was something that I had to kind of grasp and understand uh, how I was going to deal with it. And that was one thing that, that after I graduated college, uh, I really wanted to jump back in. But unfortunately, my body didn't let me uh, help as much as I wanted. Uh, I wanted to go into criminal justice and just jump straight into the field and work and, you know, solve all these crazy cases that I've read about. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I wanted to be a forensic psychologist. That was, that was something that, I'm, I mean, I still would love to do it, but unfortunately, uh, I still need to go get my doctorates. I, I have a couple bachelors in, in uh, criminal justice and psychology, but but those those are something I, I, I really am proud of having. And, and, and unfortunately, I'm not able to use them, but, uh, now I have a different focus on my life, and that's, that's helping people in whatever aspect. I mean, and this is part of it. Helping patients is, is a big thing for me. Uh, as, a, as a support group leader, I've been able to, to help patients not only understand the, the mentality and the, the, the pain side, but, you know, we, we bounce off ideas and understand each other's problems. Um, you know, we, we don't have the same issues, every one of us, but we do understand each other simply because we are patients. Um, another thing that I, that I dealt with a lot with was, as I got older, was my lung issues. Uh, my lungs became a very, very big problem. I wasn't able to, to do very, many, very much walking. Uh, like I said, after I graduated high school, I mean, in college in 2007, 2008, I I kind of went on a downward spiral. My, my scleroderma really hit me hard. I, my hands, that was the, the major part where my hands started to curl in. And I, I took a very bad, uh, a, very, a very rough time in my life. Uh, I had a lot of issues finding a job. Um, I couldn't do pretty much anything. Uh, the scleroderma had, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the lupus had affected my, my brain. I was having some uh, seizures. Uh, so I had a few years where I couldn't even drive. I couldn't do anything, so it was it was pretty rough. I had to rely on uh, my family. Now, luckily, I have a very good support system when it comes to my family and my friends. Um, and I was able to meet some people that uh, really gave me a little uh, different perspective in life. And unfortunately, that that changed a lot for me. I was able to to focus on the the better things in life and and have faith again and not only myself, but uh, others, and in God. You know, that's something that, that a lot of us may, may help us. So that's something that each one of us can totally use, is use your faith, uh, because I know I, I may not be here if I didn't have faith. Um, hey, another, another, thing, uh, another thing that helped me was, was my wife. I don't know where she's at. <laughs> yeah, she's trying to step back. Where is she? But, yeah, that, she's that's always one thing that I was hoping to say. And, you know, kind of changed, changed my perspective. You know, it, it opened my eyes to, to a lot of the, the positives in life. You know, love and, and just the comfort and just knowing somebody's there for you is a big thing. Uh, you, your family can only do so much. Uh, they... They did everything. They always did, but but Claudia was was always always there to to share those painful moments and push me and pick me up and, and help me through a lot. So that's something that uh, gets me through a lot of the times. Um, and during that time, I went from three or four years, five years of just every year my lungs would just have 
two or three uh, bouts of pneumonia or just tough lung issues. And when I was having those lung issues, I would be in the hospital anywhere from three, four, five, six days, seven days a week, uh, depending on how bad the, the pneumonia was. Uh, doctors were treated with high levels of, of antibiotics and lung, <coughs> lung uh, uh, what's called the uh, albuterol treatments, uh, breathing treatments, and all those, you know, fortunately would help me, but my lungs would just still have the issues. I would still have problems breathing. I would still have uh, issues just getting around. Exercising was a, was a rough thing for me. I mean, I mean, I'm a great exerciser in the first place, but uh, that was something that, that I really wanted to do. And at that time when I graduated college, I took advantage of that, uh, of my body not able to digest or uh, to eat uh, because of my clothes and because of my stomach. So, so I tried to take advantage of that and eat properly and help. So I was able to drop about 120 pounds and got down to about 200. And that was something, you know, it's a, it's a good thing and a bad thing, but I was able to learn uh, more things about myself and actually help myself, not only with, with Claudia and my family, but understanding that I can get back up and also understand that uh, these infections and when I was having these infections, the doctors really didn't know what to do. And uh, one time I got in there and I was having so many problems breathing that uh, they had to put me under uh, breathing, I'm sorry, they had to intubate me or put the, the breather machine on me. And that was something that, that uh, it's pretty scary. I mean, you, you have your eyes open, you, you see the, the machines on. I was, I was awake through it all, so I mean, it's, it's, it's very scary. And uh, sometimes it's, it's quite hard to understand, but uh, it's kind of one of those out-of-body experiences you see because I would be sitting there and you would hear the emergency team come thinking that my heart was dropping because my heart was having so many issues. And that was, that's kind of going to the, to the next thing when it comes to the involvement with me. Um, my heart became a, a very big problem. Uh, as, as I was in one of these hospital visits, uh, the doctor said, well, while we're in there, his breathing is bad. We better test his heart. So as they were doing that, they did a TEE test. Was press, uh, it, it tests the pressures of your heart valves. And when they did that, they found that my mitral and my aortic valve in my heart were, were very highly pressurized. So they were going to have to do emergency surgery while I was in the hospital, intubated and under the, the, the breathing uh, machine. But fortunately, I mean, unfortunately, they couldn't do it at the time because my body was too fatigued. I was uh, still very infected with the pneumonia. And uh, so that was something they couldn't do. And I was, it was a very, very, very uh, troublesome time for me and my family because they really didn't know what, what was going to happen to me. But uh, luckily, uh, a few days later, and over some time, my body started to recover, and uh, I was I was able to see a very good uh, heart doctor there, heart surgeon in Houston, and they were able to replace uh, two of my heart valves with some ar um, artificial mechanical valves, and and it's uh, it's actually been a very good thing uh, ever since then. Uh, it was in 2000, uh, 2015 is when I had the surgery. And ever since then, I've been able to realize and understand, I mean, to see more, uh, the fatigue kind of has dropped. I have a lot more, more uh, energy. I'm able to exercise a little bit more. I'm able to, to do more all the way around. Um, my diet has gotten worse, so that's good. <laughs> I'm eating better foods, but I, I am monitoring everything because at the same time, uh, when it comes to the heart, those two mechanical valves, I have to watch what I eat. Um, because my blood is, uh, the vitamin K, which m many of you may not know, uh, involves <laughs> blood clotting. So that's something they monitor when it comes to your blood thinners and your heart valves. So I got I to gotta be careful with that. So uh, I got to see a specialist every couple of weeks to get my blood checked and just take my blood thinners. But, you know, I'm still here and my heart's doing better. And, and uh, thankfully... I, I, I'll be able to see the doctor for a while 
and uh, keep my blood uh, at a level that is good for my heart. Um, another thing that I've, been, I've also had some issues with is my kidneys. Um, about four years back, and probably about 2013, um, I started having issues with just some pain in my, my lower back. And uh, I started seeing some doctors and they really didn't know what it was. Uh, after, after about a month or two, I started having some major issues, just trying to pass, you know, regular going to the bathroom. And that, unfortunately, I started having some major stones. And the doctors really don't know if that's related to the scleroderma, but I've had uh, plenty of those. and. Uh, um, I know women like to, to say it's uh, just as bad as giving birth, so I have plenty of kids. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a lot of big ones and a couple of small ones. They're cute. They're very tough. They're a little rocky. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, those, those are the fun things we get, we get to joke around about uh, as patients. and. And it's, uh, we got to keep that, that humor. Um, I know that's something myself, it, it gets a little cruel sometimes <laughs> when it comes to the humor, but you know, that, that's, you know, we, we got to be cruel sometimes to make, to make jokes and, and have fun with ourselves. A lot of times it's, it's only about myself. <laughs> you know, I, I, my friends get pretty rough with me too, but uh, I get rough with them, so <laughs> it's okay. Um, so that, that's another thing that I was having, having issues with. Um, the only thing I can do with that is just maintain the supplements that I take. Uh, I take some, uh, I had a couple years where I was taking potassium, uh, uh, like a fluid, uh, just to help with my kidneys. Uh, that seemed to help a little bit, but we weren't really sure what, is it, what it is. We want to do some more testing on them to figure out what exactly the problem is, if it's my kidneys just not, uh, absorbing the nutrients or they're just not excreting the nutrients or what's going on with them. That's something they really haven't figured out. Uh, uh, there's just like a lot of other symptoms that we, we deal with. It's, it's something that uh, we're really not sure about when it comes to the doctors and ourselves. But uh, hopefully with time and some more research, uh, we can get there and understand a little bit more what's going on. And, and that's another thing that, that I was hoping to talk about uh, outside when you walk in, we have a a couple of papers for you when it comes to about about the advocacy efforts that we're having here. This the first paper just kind of tells you what's going on with uh, with our country when it comes to bills and and the legislative uh, order. We're in the, the 115th uh, uh, session of Congress, and we have a bill that's going up. It's HR 4638, which is uh, the National Commission of Scleroma and Fibrotic Diseases Act. And uh, this page tells you a little bit more information about it. The second page is, is a letter that we would like you to fill out. Would you, would you just kind of go over that about the joining of those two? I don't know if everybody knows why they were. Oh, okay, yes. Uh, uh, we had a bill last year, which was the HR 3666, was also very similar. And it, it was about uh, scleroderma research and fibrotic diseases also. But uh, we had to change it up a little bit because that one had a little bit more emphasis on scleroderma alone. So we, we joined up with a couple, a couple other organizations and we tried to uh, reword the, the, the wording on the disease and the, I mean, on the bill. And, and now we, we're sending it back in to get some more uh, co-sponsorship and some more legislators to sponsor the bill as well. And that's something that we've had to do since the past year and we're working all together throughout the country with other states to, to have a Capitol Hill Day. We also have a, a link online. If you go to scleroderma.org forward slash advocacy, there's uh, alerts on there that you can sign up for. And also, uh, please uh, fill out this, this letter. And if, if you fill it out, we can send it to your leader and let them know that, that you're interested to, to help out with this cause. Uh, what this, this commission will do, it, it'll, it'll give us more funding to the de defense uh, Department of Defense to to add fiscal funding in the fiscal year of 2018 uh, to just add funding for scleroderma. Also, this commission will build a commission on just uh, understanding and learning causes and effects for scleroderma in general uh, by itself and fibrotic diseases. 
those two. And the whole commission is based on just understanding and learning scleroderma and fibrotic diseases in general. And that's what we're looking for. So if you can, please just fill this out and pass it back to us so we can uh, send it to all our leaders and let them know what, what we want. And this is what will help us find a cure. But, uh, you know, being part of the foundation has is, is, uh, been a very big key for me. Uh, I'm a support group leader, try to do everything I can. Uh, I would like to say thank you for all of you to come out here today. And uh, if you have any questions for me, just uh, let me know and I'd be happy to answer those.